on Zambia One Nation. The headlines. Civil servants commemorate Public Service Day. Government commissions Lukulu and Solo Agro Bridges. Chadiza District Hospital to receive a new sewer system. Plus, Zanik boosts campaign to end child marriages, teenage pregnancies. Welcome to Zanis News. My name is Kafala Salamba and my sign language interpreter is Neham Mumbi. Zanis News in details. Vice President Mtalena Lumango says progress has been made to reintroduce mandatory examinations for public service workers upon entry into the public service and promotional purposes. Mrs. Nalumango stated that this is important to prepare the minds of public workers to remain effective and efficient in the execution of their duties for a prosperous Zambia. The Vice President was speaking in Lusaka at the commemoration of Africa Public Service Day commemoration under the theme Empowering a Citizen-Centric Public Service for an Inclusive and Thriving 21st Century Africa, a Journey of Long Life Learning and Technological Transformation. Here is Wupe Sendwa with the details. Public workers have continued to be recognized and honored for their resilient contribution in providing public services to communities. Zambia today joined the rest of Africa in commemorating the Africa Public Service Day, which was held at the East Park Mall in Lusaka. Officiating at the event was Vice President Mtalena Lumangu, who highlighted some of the interventions being implemented to have a public service that spearheads development across the country. As government, we are also committed to lifelong learning for continued improvement in public service delivery. A well-educated and informed citizenry is a foundation of a thriving economy, especially in the 21st century. Progress has been made to reintroduce mandatory examinations for public service workers at the National Institute for Public Administration and the Chalimbana Local Government Institute. Yes. This is the continuous training that everybody is advocating for, making us ready for the future. We therefore continue learning, planning, preparing for the future. Fellow public service workers, all our good interventions towards a better Zambia will be in vain if we individually and collectively fail to embrace ethics and social responsibility in our operations. The United Nations stated the need to embrace technological advancement in the civil service if the changing needs and aspirations of the citizens are to be met. Technology is driving profound societal changes. In this dynamic environment, the role of public service workers must involve to meet the changing needs and aspirations of the citizens that they serve. We need to, to ultimately aspire for a professional public service that is not only responsive and efficient, but also empowers citizens through lifelong learning and harnesses the full potential of technological transformation. To achieve effective and efficient public service delivery, trade unions called for the creation of an environment that motivates public servants to operate. Public service are the backbone of our country's progress. And they, they play a very critical role in delivering essential services, implementing policies, and driving economic growth. I still want to go back to the issue of Western Province. Public service workers must be able to work freely across our country. And we want to appeal to village headmen, traditional chiefs, to sensitize their, their chiefdoms. The secretary to the cabinet appreciated the response from the general public 
who actively participated in events leading to the commemoration day. Our citizens came to the exhibitions from all walks of life to appreciate different products and services on display. In addition, members of the public use the opportunity to interact with public service workers and provide feedback on the performance of the public service. Equally attractive to the members of the public was the opportunity to access services as well as purchase products on the spot. We reaffirm our commitment to fully implement the various policies promulgated by government towards digital transformation in the country. Various institutions received awards for their innovativeness in service delivery. Wopesendo Fozanis in Osaka. In a related development, Eastern Province Permanent Secretary Paul Tole has commended civil servants for their dedication towards serving the country. In a speech read on his behalf by Eastern Province Assistant Secretary Clement Chilembo, at this year's Public Service Day, Mr. Tole reaffirmed government's commitment to serving people in various sectors. Details in this report. The climax of this year's African Public Service Day in Eastern Province was reached with five government departments scooping various awards. The Zambia Agriculture Research Institute, ZARI, got the Best Exhibitor Award for this year's Public Service Day. Things that we are doing, uh, we are doing a lot of technology uh, development, say from the soil, where we start the soil itself, the seeds that we put in the, in the soil, and the, uh, the crop that comes out of the shoot. We are doing a lot of technology uh, application to ensure that our farmers get the appropriate uh, uh, products from the station, or from the seed companies, or from the farmers. The Department of Community Development was awarded as the most high-performing department. The Department of Community Development is, say, uh, is providing our services that are to do with changing lives, giving hope to people that ordinarily would not have access to the means of empowerment, would not have access to have changed lives. So it's a department that takes care of the need or the most socially and economically included citizens of the Republic of Zambia. Officiating at the event, Eastern Province Assistant Secretary, who spoke on behalf of the Provincial Permanent Secretary, Paul Tole, reaffirmed government's commitment towards creation of the enabling environment for citizens in the country. Ladies and gentlemen, to ensure sustained provision of quality, effective and efficient public services to the people, government under the able leadership of His Excellency, Mr. Haka in the Hitchleba, President of the Republic of Zambia, has further prioritized recruitment in the public sense. You are a testimony of all that is happening about recruitment, the 30,000 teachers that we have ever recruited. Mr. Chilembo also said government has prioritized recruitment of public workers as a means to improve public service delivery in various localities. In an effort to have a skilled labor force that responds to the needs of industry, government has also continued to engage skilled training institutions and public universities in order to support our young people to acquire relevant knowledge and skills. I, therefore, encourage all the young people in Eastern Province and the country at large to take advantage of skills development and knowledge seeking through the bursary scheme under the CDF. Public Service Day is an important event where all public institutions take time to showcase their services and disseminate information to the general public. That's what Dimba Niza is news in Chipata District, Eastern Province. Also in the news, Chipangali District is by the end of this year set to have its first ever mortuary facility following the release of funds under the Constituency Development Fund, CDF. Let's take a look at this report. From the time it was declared a district in 2018, Chipangali has depended on Chipata District to access mortuary services. This is why the construction of a mortuary at Kasengamini Hospital has elated residents. 
A CDF monitoring team inspected the project, and like everyone else, authorities look forward to the completion of this key infrastructure. Oh, okay, brilliant. Okay, okay, wonderful. Okay. Yes. The doors, the doors are ready. Okay. 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 So this is the first of its kind, and as we are speaking, people are carrying their beloved ones all the way from Mazatua to town. They go back to Mazatua, then on the day of burial or a day before, they again go to fetch the body and so. So we are in the heart. We want people to start benefiting. We want people to start keeping their beloved ones during that time of waiting, at least within Chipangai. We want to be self-reliant as Chipangai. So far, so good. It looks good. Mm -hmm. Government is very concerned. That's why we are taking monitoring and evaluation very seriously, so that we get the value for our CDF money. Uh, our, the user department, Minister of Health, were already reminding me of um, backup power oh. because of the power outages. Yes. So it means even if we hand over, by the 30th of June, we can't, um, we can't immediately use it because of the power situation. So, so, so we need now to plan maybe for a genset or, or even just solar. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. So it is something that we need to have at the back of our mind. Mm -hmm. That even if it is handed over, everything is installed, we cannot use it. Mm -hmm. Because we now we almost have almost 20 hours of not having power. Ah. So if we had bodies in there. It means they will, they, will not, they will not be in a good mm -hmm. condition. Chipangali is being serviced by Chipata Central Hospital. So it's a cost, a part of the community. But this initiative coming here, it's a plus. It's a relief to the community. Patso Dimbali, Chipangali District, Eastern Province. Meanwhile, government has expressed happiness with the pace and quality of works being undertaken on the Katete Chanida Road. Speaking when he inspected the roadworks, Ministry of Information and Media Director Spokesperson Henry Kapata appreciated the seriousness that the contractor has attached to the works. More in the following report. Connecting Zambia to the port of Beira and the Nakala Corridor, the Katete Chanida Road holds the capacity of generating more than three million United States dollars through foreign toll fees and more than two million kwacha through toll fees collected from registered vehicles through the Chanida border. To enhance and harness its potential, the Zambian government, through a public-private partnership, is rehabilitating, constructing, and upgrading the road. Minister of Information and Media Director Spokesperson Henry Kapata took time to appreciate the works. This is a very critical road because it connects to another country. A lot of economic activities obviously are expected from this particular stretch. We are talking about the contract providing markets to be constructed along this stretch and the big one, which is a one border stop. So you can see that this is one particular road that is urgently needed because this is one transit where copper is transported to the other side. We also have fuel transported to the other side. And we also have the two peoples of these countries, Zambia and Mozambique, engaging each other in terms of business. So you can see the serious commitment of this particular contractor, that the road is going on well, and government appreciates the works that are currently going on so far. Meanwhile, the contractor gave an update on the works. Hope Walia, Katete District, Eastern Province. 
Now, Minister of Infrastructure and Urban Development, Charles Melupi, has commissioned the Lukulu and Solo Acro bridges in Northern Province. The two bridges, which are located in Lunte and Luwingu districts, have been built at a cost of 15.9 million kwacha, Nkweto Ngoshe reports. For a long time, these logs are what made up a crossing point at Lukulu River in Lunte district. The poor state of the bridge and use of canoes to cross the river posed a danger to the lives of local people. But now, government has come to the aid of the residents by putting up an acro bridge. Minister of Infrastructure and Urban Development Charles Milupi commissioned the bridge. The two bridges we are commissioned today have been constructed and installed at a combined cost of 15.9 million kwacha. The Road Development Agency is undertaking a program under which it will construct and install 131 acro bridges in seven provinces. 21 crossing points have been identified for construction and installation of acro bridges in northern province alone. Northern Province Minister and Road Development Agency Board Chairperson were also present at the event. We are talking about 30 acro bridges in a single year. It has never happened. So I mentioned to say that uh, this government is a government that believes in working. It is our hope that with easier accessibility to market areas, the agricultural activities will be enhanced in these areas and create additional jobs and wealth in this sector. The local community is elated with this development. Mr. Milupi and the delegation later proceeded to Luwingu, where another acro bridge was commissioned at Solo. Nkwetongo Shefozanis in Lunte. In our education segment, Luapula Province Permanent Secretary Mighty Mumbi has commissioned several projects under the Constituency Development Fund CDF in Mambilima and Mwense constituencies. Mr. Mumba also took the opportunity to encourage school managers to take advantage of the CDF to improve communities and learning standards. We join Lewis Changwe with the details. This is one of the new reconstructed 1 by 3 classroom block at Kashiva Secondary School in Mwense District. A total of over 1 million kwacha constituents development fund was spent to come up with this infrastructure. The classroom block is one among other projects commissioned by Luapura Province Permanent Secretary Mait Mumba. As school management, you took advantage of the nasty CDF which has improved tremendous from the 1.6 million to close to 30 million. Now it will be slightly above 30 million. So please let, let us, as, as management for this particular school, let us take advantage of the availability of these funds through CDF, apply, expand this school. And at Mambirima Special Secondary School, the PS handed over a computer laboratory to the school management. We need infrastructure uh, regardless of where we are as a school. Uh, what is obtaining on the Copa Belt in Lusaka uh, at this particular facility should also exist here. We should have computers, we should have a library, uh, we should have a science laboratory, we should have this, everything. Both the school management and the pupils are grateful to government for the gesture. Thank you so much again to His Excellency uh, President Akainde Chilema for uh, uh, the CDF, uh, which has also been increased, and that's why we are seeing all this infrastructure. Thank you so much. Um, we would just love to say thank you for everything that the government has done for us, because uh, it has helped us a lot by giving us a library and a computer room because it will enable us to be studying, mm -hmm. to be exposed to the technological world. Lewis Changwe, Zanis Mwense, Luapra Province. We take a break. More stories when we return. Zambia Today is a program that keeps you informed on various government policies and programs. Join us every Tuesday at 18 hours on Zanis TV, 
tops the platform, channel 6 DTT and 458 DTH. Don't miss. Woman Thou Art is a program that offers counsel to the female folk, sharing real-life experiences and providing guidance to the women and young girls on necessary steps and conduct that will help shape and nature a sober society. Watch Woman Thou Art on Zenith TV every Wednesday at 18.30 hours on the Topster channel, channel 6 DTT and channel 458 DTH. Welcome back. Chadiza District Commissioner Malan Zimbasi's government is repairing the damage to a system at Chadiza District Hospital, which is posing a serious public health threat at the institution. Reacting to concerns by some affected mothers at the mother's shelter, Mr. Zimba bemoaned the poor sanitation situation and called for the administration to expedite the process of intervention. Jubel Zulu now reports. The challenges are many. Some mothers have also resorted to open defecation at Chadiza District Hospital due to a blocked toilet. During the multi-sectorial team visit at the health facility, Mothers also complained of lack of electricity at the mother's shelter, commonly known as Chada in Chewa language. So, I'm going to go to the toilet. I'm going to go to the toilet. I'm going to go to the toilet. The district health administration is aware of the challenges. So the hospital does have enough blankets to give to our patients. Uh, however, due to the change in the weather pattern, we've had a challenge because we currently do not have a dryer in our laundry room. So we are basically drying our blankets from outside and that has given a, a delay to give the patients to use these blankets. But we do have enough blankets at the hospital. The district commissioner also has an assurance. <laughs> Meanwhile, in health news, Bet Cure Children's Hospital of Zambia has conducted hearing care services in selected districts in northern province. Bet Cure Spiritual Director Terence Kombe says the outreach is meant to meet the needs of the people who are living with hearing impairments and cannot afford to travel to Lusaka to seek advanced medical attention. Here is Taungankoma. A team of experts from Bet Cure Zambia Children's Hospital is in Northern Province to provide hearing care to the members of the communities. The team has visited Kaputa, Luwingu, Mbala, Pulungu, Perkoso, and Kasama districts, particularly to help people with hearing impairments. Particularly on this trip, we came for those with problems with hearing. And then it's under ENT, of course, so we are providing uh, uh, treatment, on uh, spot-on treatment for those with hearing pro problems. Uh, uh, by the grace of God, uh, even though we are children's hospital, we have seen that uh, the majority of people with hearing problems are also adults, and we felt we would not leave them out when we have come on board. And so we have uh, 
also attended to their doubts. And what we have noted is that the majority of people, uh, via many ways, are losing uh, their hearing. In Kasama, community members lined up to receive medical attention from the team. <laughs> Other than offering medical support, the hospital also provides spiritual support. So ours is to provide a holistic kind of healing. So we, we, we attend to the medical needs and also the spiritual needs of the patients. So here what we are doing is that we are providing counseling after they have gone through all the medical procedures, uh, the medical uh, aspects uh, of their treatment. Then we are able to sit with them, uh, provide the social, psychological uh, counseling. For Zanis in Kasama, I'm Taonga Nkoma. We move to northwestern province where principal planner Christopher Walia has called on the private sector to take advantage of the current energy deficit being experienced in the nation to invest in the sector. Speaking during the Extractive Industry Transparency Alliance Employment Forum, Mr. Walia indicated that the current energy deficit should be exploited and ultimately create jobs. Jen Famtoshi now gives us the details. Job creation has been a contentious issue in Zambia, especially among the youths, over the years. This is why the Extractive Industry Transparency Alliance has created a forum to connect potential employees to employers as well as share ideas. Northwestern Province Principal Planner indulges the audience with possible solutions. What is our focus might be on hydropower generation. And don't you think that if we went into other spaces, non-traditional spaces, if we went solar, for example, don't you think that some of those solar farms are going to create more jobs? If we went the, the wind direction, don't you think that that wind space is going to create a lot more jobs? So what we need to, to really think about in this meeting is that uh, there is an opportunity in the challenges that we are currently facing, there is an opportunity in the space of diversification, there is an opportunity in the Kansanshi Mining Company shares how they are creating jobs for locals. We are great that at least five days must be submitted by our key stakeholders and we are great on the debt and the months we to submit these um, applications. The idea, friends, is that as a mine operating in a community like this one, you cannot cause direct the community because their leadership struck. We realize as a foundation and as a consumption, mm -hmm. sometimes there's a, a, a blurred line between understanding what the role of the company is and what the role of government is. Mm -hmm. Government is a huge entity. It's bigger than consumption, it's bigger than FQM. And so we need for us to also understand that there's a mandate that consumption or the foundation can, can fulfill but also there's a mandate that government needs to fulfill. Meanwhile, the community through a youth and women activist calls on contractors in the mind to prioritize locals. So there was a suggestion from the community that if the um, FQM sees that the ones in charge of the contractors can also um, see to it that they engage locals to supply to the contractors that are providing services in the mine. Reporting for Zanis in Solwezi District, Genfa Mtoshi. In other news, the Food Reserve Agency, FRA, has procured over 24,000 by 50 kilograms bags of maize from farmers in Luwingu District in the ongoing crop marketing exercise. Luwingu District Commissioner Chomba Chileshe disclosed that the purchase were done in one week. Meanwhile, Northern Province Permanent Secretary Bernard Bondu called on security wings in the district to be on high alert and curb the transportation of maize outside the province. Geoffrey Piri was in Luwingu and gives us more in this report. Stacks of maize slowly piling up at Menga Satellite Depot in Luwingu district. 
Menda is among the 38 depots that the Food Reserve Agency, FRA, has opened up in Luingo. And Luingo District Commissioner Chomba Chileshe, who was briefing Northern Province Permanent Secretary about the purchases, said many satellites are doing fine. The total purchase for the district was at uh, 24,067 by 50 kg bags of white maize. I went around some satellite depots, they are doing fine, but um, we are not uh, operating, or not all the satellites are operating because we are expecting some gadgets to arrive today, <coughs> and maybe tomorrow all the satellites will be operating. And one of the farmers who was found preparing his grains ahead of the sales encouraged other farmers to sell their maize to FRA. <laughs> Earlier, Northern Province Permanent Secretary Bernard Dimpundu emphasized the need for security wings to be on high alert and kept smuggling of the commodity. Northern Province, that bed is still standing up until the ministry tells us otherwise. Therefore, our officers in uniforms continue doing what you are doing not to allow no one to ship the mess. Geoffrey Piri, reporting for Zanis in Luingo District, Northern Province. In a related development, about 4,000 smallholder farmers who practice irrigation farming across six districts of Eastern Province have started benefiting from the 20 metric tons of maize seed donated to government by Bayer Seed Company through Total Land Care. More in the following report. In an effort to mitigate the impact of the drought disaster caused by the Odino across the country, smallholder farmers in Eastern Province have started receiving early maize maturing variety seeds to enhance productivity in the agriculture sector. The maize seed being distributed to farmers matures in four months. Provincial Assistant Secretary Clement Chilembo graced the event on behalf of the Provincial Permanent Secretary, Paul Tolle. We are also aware that it is difficult for our smallholder farmers to easily access finance and buy seed. And so the coming on board of Bayer International, together with the Total Land Care, to provide seed is of great help to me because we know that our people will be able to utilize the invasion facilities to the best of their ability. And the cooperating partners have pledged their continued support to small-scale farmers and the government. The seed is estimated to cover about 1,000 hectares and will benefit 4,000 small order farmers across the seven, I mean the six selected districts in the eastern province. This donation is a response to the impact, as we all know, we have had El Nino uh, weather event, which has imp impacted many farmers. In, in Zambia and across the region. And these are farmers through TLC that are doing uh, irrigation and, we, uh, and, and through this initiative we hope that uh, we can be able to secure our, our production in four months, uh, I mean in the coming four months, and this will help in uh, indeed complement government efforts of ensuring that hunger is curtailed. The donation reinforces Bayer's uh, global ambitious objective of empowering one million smallholder farmers by the year 2030. So we have a bigger ambition globally of reaching 100 million smallholder farmers. Robert Magawa, a farmer, is overwhelmed with the gesture. <laughs> Mwana se tilipa anonisalimi. Mwaichi tiliko na manzalimi mtilipa ano. Niosa kwa nila manzi yawa. Kwa mambe usa mwatipa saizi. Ziti tuwalipata alindawa zika veko pala. Pewe tikanga wamvula milisi. 
The six districts benefiting from the donations are Petauke, Sinda, Katete, Kasenengwa, Chipangali, and Chipata. Pato Dimbani Zanis News in Chipata District. We take another break. More stories when we return. The issue is a program that looks at topical issues happening in the country. Watch the issue every Friday at 1930 hours only on Zanis TV, Channel 6 DTT and Channel 458 DTH on Topstar. Don't miss. How I Made It is a program that delves into the many success stories of different people from all walks of life. Watch How I Made It on Zenith TV every Thursday at 18.30 hours on the Topster Channel, Channel 6 DTT and Channel 458 DTH. Welcome back. In Western Province, the Zambia National Education Coalition, ZANIC, has embarked on a bus campaign on ending child marriages and teen pregnancies in order to promote awareness in Mongu and Kaoma districts of Western Province. ZANIC board member, Early Childhood Education, Katasova Mbala, stated that the campaign is meant to encourage the girl child on the importance of education and the re-entry policy among other government initiatives. Here's a report. Zambia has got a lot of girls that are out of school because of teenage pregnancies and early child marriages, especially in the rural parts of the country. For this reason, the Zambia National Education Coalition ZANEC is conducting a bus campaign in Mongo district of Western Province to sensitize them on early child marriages and teen pregnancies. Kataso Bambara is Zambia National Education Coalition board member charge of early child with education. I think uh, for the past uh, two years we've seen that uh, there's a lot of increase of a lot of girls getting married, a lot of girls becoming pregnant. And we are concerned as a civil society organization and want to work with the government so that we address or we mitigate the issues of early marriages and child pregnancy. So we're in Mongu and we're in Mongu to sensitize uh, the communities so that we can work together and we make sure that no child should drop out of school because of pregnancy. No child should drop out of school because the, the child is uh, taken to marriage. We are lucky with the kind of in the government. There is free education. So there is no way today that a child can drop out of school because of marriage. So those girls that are pregnant and they fall out of school, they are free to go to a nearby school, consult with the school authority. How can they go back? As a collision, we are working also with other stakeholders like Camfe. We are also working together with uh, the project by the Ministry of Education Keep Girls in School. We are also working with uh, Faweza. These are girl child oriented um, organizations. Various players in the education sector, such as Faweza and Camfe, also shared the importance of the bus campaign. So we are here as Faweza to support this initiative, which is a very important initiative because this is also one of the things that we do. We also advocate for ending child marriage and teenage pregnancies. But we are here to support the ZANEC team and also emphasize the way we entry policy, which is a very important um, aspect also, where when girls get pregnant, they are able to go back to school. We are here in Mok with the ZANEC team, uh, campaigning for uh, afterwards fighting child marriages. So as comfort, we make sure that a girl is educated and uh, us working with the ZANEC team, we are working towards the same goal. So we are here for the campaign where we want to uh, keep the uh, communities informed about the importance of education, how important is education to a girl child. Mungu District Standards Officer Rifumbo Mundia welcomed ZANEC's strides in promoting girl child education and ending child marriages of uh, teen pregnancy and child day marriage. Mm -hmm. These are critical issues yes. that um, as, a, as a district we are also trying to fight. Yes. Uh, and you know in most cases these things are coming just like you said from traditional leadership. Yes. Uh, in the societies where the children are living, mm -hmm. uh, some parents find it uh, necessary to marry off the child yes. at an early age mm -hmm. uh, in the view that they are going to gain money. money. 
but at the end, that's a disadvantage in that child in terms of uh, the future. Sandra Fozanis in Mongo District, Western Province. In other news, government says it will work with the newly installed senior chief Musele Musokantanda, the fourth of the Lunda-speaking people of Kalumbila District in Northwestern Province, to foster development. Northwestern Province Permanent Secretary Colonel Grandson Katambi, in a speech read on his behalf by Kalumbila District Commissioner Brenda Sankisa, noted that the installation will make it easier for government to bring development in the area. Chai Wunkoma has the rest in the story. Odson Malishenyi, a local businessman and a contractor in Columbia District, has today ceased to be an ordinary person following his ascendance to the throne as senior chief in Musele, Musokantanda, the fourth of the Lunda speaking people in Musele chiefdom. Malishenyi, who once served as deputy mayor for Sulezi District, has filled in the power vacuum that occurred due to the passing on of the late senior chief Musele, the third who died nearly two years ago. The now traditional leader, aged 41, was born on 2nd March 1983 at Mutoka village in Chief Musele's chiefdom. The installation ceremony is being attended by several Lunda chiefs. The church played its own role. This is the man whom God has chosen. This is all. Whoever would touch this man will be in trouble. people have these expectations. Now today the new chief is installed. We expect a lot of developments to come with the new chief. However, the chief has his own priorities. The focus is I think I would like to focus on the major problem affecting our community. Um, it is uh, my wish and pleasure that um, we need to see how we can make a, or create a good relationship with, with our investors uh, and a good relationship with our government to see to it that uh, our people here get employed. Reporting for the NIS News, I am Che Bunkoma in Kalumbira District, Northwestern Province. In Lusaka Province, online taxi drivers have asked the government to intervene in alleged exploitation by various online applications. Speaking during an engagement with Lusaka District Commissioner Rosa Zulu, the drivers called on the government to compel the platforms to address various issues, including the safety and security of drivers, especially in the work of the recent spread of mysterious murders. More in the following report. Drivers should not be forced to go to areas which are not safe. No investor should come here and do any harm. No! These are online taxi drivers gathered for a meeting with the Lusaka District Commissioner. The drivers, who predominantly use platforms such as Yango, have several concerns which they want addressed with the help of authorities. They want government to intervene in alleged exploitation by the online platforms. The main concern among the drivers is low fares and security, especially in the wake of the recent spate of drivers being murdered in mysterious circumstances. We seem to have a problem because systems are designed 
by those who want to reap more than they sow. These and those that want to feast while making other players sweat for peanuts. We are going to be united and make sure that this issue of uh, being dominated by one who caused the shots comes to an end. There are a lot of injustices that I can read out to you. Number one, you will find that the, council, the, the rider can cancel the trips for you at, at, at will, at their own pleasure. I can't. So if I make an order, what, what will happen, especially I don't know here, but in Copala, what will happen if they don't like the price, they will cancel. I don't know here. But they will order you, and then you start off four kilometers, and you are about to arrive, and then he goes against two sets for another taxi, he cancels. The Lusaka District Commissioner told the drivers that the government's main interest is for citizens to be protected. The district commissioner took note of the concerns and assured the drivers that she will escalate the matter to higher authorities for possible intervention. We are protecting the Zambian citizen. We are, prote we are protecting you. One thing, you have to be protected because we are Zambians. When we can protect even the foreigners, why should we fail to protect you? And that is the reason why I've agreed to come. Yeah. So that we see how we can protect. Because here, there are two things which are which are, are put in my chest and in my mind. Pricing and security. Yeah. The drivers used the occasion to hand over a petition to the district commissioner for the government to help in addressing their plight. Mtalekani for Zanis News in Lusaka. Also in the news, over 200 students at Lufonyama's Katembola Youth Skills Training Center have sent a word of appreciation to government for giving them an opportunity to acquire skills through the Constituency Development Fund CDF program. Details in this report by Agri Basilungwe. Their interest and passion for agriculture can never be doubted, as can be seen from their commitment. These are among the 200 students at Lufanyama's Katembula Youth Skills Training Center, sponsored by government under the Constituency Development Fund program. With the skills acquired so far, they are proud to talk about their viable future plans in farming. At some point, I had even lost interest of going to school, but CDF has assisted me a lot. From here, I can do a lot of different things. Even you guys who are just sitting at home, you can come and join us here. And it's free. I learned how to things. I learned how to cultivate this. I can grow crops like tomatoes, like quinoa, and so many, so many things. Yes. And to compare to that time when I was outside. The training institution is satisfied with students' results. Uh, this program, it will help them a lot. Yes, in terms of... Uh, uh, life skills. Uh, uh, a student has acquired uh, the knowledge in tomato production. You, that uh, student cannot suffer. Why? Because within uh, three months, that person or that student is able to get money out of that. The students who are focused, student who knows why they are here, uh, student who have seen that you know, they have been suffering in the past, and now they need to change. So we thank God for the government. Uh, support which they are giving our arenas in terms of tuition fee, in terms of uh, new allowance, safety attire, accommodation, they are paid 100 percent. If taken seriously, the Constituency Development Fund will surely help many youths acquire necessary self-sustaining skills in the country. Reporting, I'm Agrippa Silumboy. Lastly, in sports news, the Ministry of Sports and Arts in Luapula province has launched activities leading into the first ever Mansa Community Sports Festival scheduled for August this year. Speaking during the launch, Luapula province permanent secretary, Mighty Mumba, underscored the role of sports in development. We join Teddy Mulango in this report.
with his port being a medium of unity for people in different societies, it is equally key in ensuring good health among people. This is why people from different walks of life in Mansa district have come together under the umbrella of the first ever Mansa Community Sports Festival. Luapula Province Permanent Secretary was represented by Luapula Province Director of Finance at the launch of activities leading to the Mansa Community Sports Festival to be held in August this year. Community sports emphasizes the integration of diverse participants, fostering unity and collaborating regardless of their levels or background. There has been little participation of people in discipline activities within the communities as it is viewed as a relatively low priority among a host of community needs and goals. In addition, government resources alone have not been adequate to spare sports programs and activities in the communities. This has created a gap for sports to thrive as the discipline remains with a lot of untapped talent in communities which has the potential to contribute to personal and economical development of the districts, provinces, and the country at large. The District Community Festival, Festival will present an innovative approach to not only promote community sports and talents, reduce cases of juvenile delinquencies among the youths and children and non-communicable diseases, but as a tool and platform to attract the private sector to invest in sports activities and facilities which will stay a mass participation of communities in sports. The Minister of Sports and Arts explains the significance of the festival. The community festival is focusing on creating a platform for all members or community members of Mansa district to identify a sport of their own and be able to participate in it. The community sports has come as a very great milestone. Why? A lot of times they roast and the untapped terrains will be discovered. Ted Malungo reporting for Zanis News in Mansa District in Wapla Province. As we end the news, a reminder of the top stories. Civil servants commemorate Public Service Day. Government commissions Lukulu and Solo Agro Bridges. Chadiza District Hospital to receive a new sewer system. Plus, Zanek boosts campaign to end child marriages, teenage pregnancies. Well, that not brings, brings us to the end of Zanis News. My name is Kafola Salamba. And on behalf of my sign language interpreter, Niham Mumbi, and the entire production crew, it's thank you for watching and stay tuned.